He lines up under the center the first day of mini camp or the first day of training camp. You know, you have somebody who says, I can read this. I know what I'm supposed to do with the football. That's the toughest thing for any wide receiver, quarterback, running back coming into the game is they have to think before they can react. So what you get to a large degree is you're getting a product that isn't what you've seen on film as a college senior. I think in Sensum's case, when he goes to Kansas City, you're going to see him be able to throw the football and move around in the pocket and move the offense pretty much like he did at Stanford. There was a question about Stenstrom, Mel, uh, and, and he is a name that we definitely thought we might not hear to the fourth or the fifth round, even though he's a perfect fit for the Chiefs. Uh, how did you have him, uh, Mel Rader? About the right area around the fifth round for Steve Stenstrom, who doesn't have the cannon arm. But he did play in the perfect system, and that really makes you wonder, is it the system that's making the quarterback effective, or is he a, an individual talent who can come into the NFL? A little underthrown on that deep pass, but uh, he is accurate. That's the one thing about Steve Stenstrom. He's tough, hangs in the pocket very well, and delivers the football down the field. And, of course, running Bill Walsh's offense, you know about his intelligence and his demeanor and just how he'll fit in in, uh, in a pro system. But uh, in terms of being a great athlete, uh, that's one thing he's not. He's not in the Joe Montana category. There was comparisons to Joe during his career but uh, the arm strength was the question uh, tough kid smart overachieving type quarterback Joe well you know you use the term overachieving I think really right now when you you look at the quarterbacks whether they're on the professional level or in the college level they're a product of the system first of all of course their own abilities first I guess the system secondly and then the talent that they play and play with him so the quarterback being a good football player or a great football player is determined by a lot of other elements besides he as an individual. So I think Sensum's going to be, you know, he's going to be given an opportunity. And, and with like we talked about, the amount of guys that are over 30 in this game and, and close to 35, he should play a long time if in no other capacity as a backup. You know, an interesting note here in the fourth round before we move on for a minute. The first pick in the fourth round was Rob Johnson. The last pick in the fourth round was quarterback Steve Stenstrom. Johnson was a receiver for Stenstrom one year in high school. So quarterback and receiver turned quarterback. They're the bookend picks, the first and the last pick in the fourth round. Kind of interesting how that one worked out. Uh, of course, Steve Stenstrom knows firsthand about Bill Walsh and his tutelage of quarterbacks, having played for Bill when he uh, coached the Cardinal there at Stanford. Uh, Bill Walsh had a chance to tutor, although not for three or four years, a lot of other quarterbacks. Bill Walsh's quarterback camp. We'll talk about that and more when we return. Zima Gold. Introducing Huffy Blades All-Terrain Bike with an oversized Mega 2 frame design and an 18-speed Omni Index gear shifting system. It's what Bonnie Blair rides when she's not on the ice. Huffy Blades from Huffy, America's first choice. Searching for an oil change you can trust? Turn to the one who knows your GM vehicle best, your GM Goodwrench Quick Lube Plus dealer. 29 minutes or less, guaranteed. Now for only $19.95 or less, get a GM Goodwrench Quick Lube Plus oil change. Use us for a change. Stop in today to enter the GM Goodwrench Quick Lube Plus Supercharged Sweepstakes. You can win $100,000 from the GM card or one of six GM vehicles or other super prizes. ESPN wants you to feel the rush of IndyCar racing. Enter the ESPN Legend Return Sweepstakes, sponsored by Firestone, and you can go to the Indy 500 as a member of the Patrick Racing Team. Runners up get Firestone Firehawk tires or racing jackets. To enter, visit any Firestone tire retailer or send a postcard to the ESPN Legend Return Sweepstakes, PO Box 518, Hermosa Beach, California, 90254. The ESPN Legend Return Sweepstakes, sponsored by Firestone. Uh, welcome back to New York. As the fifth round is uh, underway, fast and furious, we go seven rounds, 249 picks overall. When we go off the air here on ESPN at 3 o'clock, Mike Tirico and the gang will pick it up until conclusion on ESPN2. Well, we, we talked about Bill Walsh's uh, much-heralded quarterback camps, if you will. They're kind of a sleepaway camp for a few days for Kerry Collins. They each spent three days, either alone or in a, in a, a little group. Kerry Collins from Penn State. Rob Johnson, the quarterback we spoke about from USC. 
Chad May, quarterback from Kansas State. Danny O'Neill, who's yet to go anywhere, the quarterback from Oregon. He also had John Pacey, quarterback from Indiana. Stenstrom, his own quarterback, figured that a few years was not enough. He wanted three more days. Wide receiver J.J. Stokes went to this camp as well and kind of caught a lot of passes from guys. We know that. And John Walls, quarterback from BYU, also went to this camp, if you will. Can this drastically help a quarterback? I mean, we saw Stokes there, too, but drastically help, or, or is it just more accumulating some knowledge, Joe? I mean, what are your thoughts on a, on a three-day rigorous workout for these quarterbacks at this stage in their careers? I think it's, I think it's very important for, for Bill Walsh to be able to spend some time with these young men is invaluable to them. He can share information. He can present philosophies. He can present techniques to them. But in three days, you can't make or break a quarterback. I think what these young men have done is they've invested time and money in an opportunity to learn from a man who's taught a lot of great quarterbacks. But there's a part of teaching the game. There's also a part of people that have played the game. Bill never played quarterback, so there are things that he can't share with them. But he does understand what it takes to make a quarterback. I don't know if he's tried to make all Joe Montana's. I think Joe developed himself into quite a quarterback as well. The time spent with Bill Walsh, I think, was valuable. How and the way it would determine where they would fall in this draft, I think, is a moot point. I don't think that the fact that you spent three days with Bill Walsh or five days or whatever is going to make you a first-round pick or a fourth-round pick. Your ability as a college quarterback is going to make you fall somewhere in this draft. Like I said, the time and the dollars spent, I think, are valuable. The question is, what are you going to do with the knowledge that Bill Walsh has shared with you, and who's going to babysit you to make sure you do it from that point on? Those are questions that aren't answered in my mind. Mel, this is uh, unique, this sort of camp. I mean, not that someone would go for extra workouts, but something like this. Is, is it helpful do you, in your eyes? It can be helpful, and you, you never know. You've got a lot of teams in this league who don't particularly like to see somebody try to mold quarterbacks or different players. And when you talk about Bill Walsh, he did a great job. So there's some resentment towards successful people in any business, uh, Chris. And I think in this case, some teams may look at it and say, hey, uh, you know, they're you're trying to develop a quarterback in a certain system with a certain scheme or what have you. I think they're basically evaluating these quarterbacks, what they did during their career. When you're talking about what Bill does, certainly helps them for the future. But in terms of the draft, teams have their own minds the makeup as to where a kid's going to stack up. I think, you know, to, to me, too, if you're going to... Um, I've read some of the comments of Bill Walsh about the quarterbacks that he's worked with, and in all honesty, if you're paying somewhere between ten and $30,000 to go work with somebody, you don't expect him to criticize anything you do. I mean, let's, let's not kid each other about this whole thing. Bill Walsh, I think, served these gentlemen all a purpose. Their agents, the players, he served a purpose for them. He gave them an understanding. But I wouldn't expect Bill Walsh to come out and criticize Rob Johnson or John Walsh or anybody else that he's worked with. He's being paid too darn much money to do it, to be flat honest with you. All right, well, those are our comments uh, on the Bill Walsh uh, camp for quarterbacks. Reaction around the league. Uh, this is a unique program that Bill uh, uh, underwent uh, this spring. Let's check some of the reactions. It's all positive. Anybody that's going to spend time to try to make themselves a better football player, uh, is a plus as far as I'm concerned. And those people that are working out with Bill obviously want to be great football players, so it's a plus. Anytime you can get a person of the expertise of Bill Walsh to coach a quarterback, I think it's, it's, it's invaluable. I think that that's the hardest position a scout has to evaluate. I think if you just look through the history of the draft, there's been more mistakes made in, in quarterbacks than any position anywhere else. I don't think that there's anybody really have a, that has a magic wand. The player has to have the innate ability and the competitive attitude and such and those things that go with successful athletes. I'm not sure that it's completely beneficial. Uh, you know, sometimes you, a kid starts thinking more about, you know, well, Coach Walsh said to do this and I should do this and, and they end up maybe hurting themselves in the long run because they're not quite as natural with a lot of the things that they're, they're pretty good at. Well, one of the names that, uh, that we talked about uh, going to the, to the Bill Walsh School for Quarterbacks and has not yet been drafted. John Walsh, the productive quarterback at BYU, who at one time was, was viewed, at least going into the year, maybe, if not the top, of the, by some, the first handful of quarterbacks to go. He hasn't gone yet. Andrea, you were Andrea Kramer in Jacksonville. You were at the workout that uh, John Walsh had uh, with his namesake, Bill Walsh. Uh, thoughts on what happened to Walsh in the draft and also thoughts on what Walsh might have gotten out of his brief stay with Bill. Well, I can tell you this, Chris. Uh, John Walsh and J.J. Stokes, by the way, worked together with, with Bill Walsh up in the Bay Area on two separate occasions.